the Collingwood coach, Craig McRae, has been good enough to join us. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Lovely to see you, mate. Yeah, I've missed you guys. Yeah, mm. Hey, congratulations <laughs> on <laughs> the win. Before we get into the other stuff, the win, magnificent. that Queen's birthday win was fantastic. And uh, it, you could see the joy that it brought you as well at the time because that was that four in a row? I think they made it four in a row for you guys and playing some really good footy. Yeah, it was a memorable day. Mm. Yeah, the um, yeah, the beanies and the occasion and, and the like. And but the game was a ripping game. Yeah, you know, fantastic. I, I, game. I watched it back a couple of times because um, <laughs> we had a week off and you know so a chance to reflect on it a bit. But um, yeah, the boys are playing well. Mm. And when you it's... when you, when you watch it back, what's the th- was there something that stood out to you as a uh, as one of the key explanations to it all? What why we played the yeah. way we did? Is there something happening now that wasn't happening in the past? We're just doing things better. Oh, I just think there's a lot of belief in the group at the mm. moment, and yeah, no doubt that you, know, you have um, you, you gain confidence through action. And mm. you know, at the moment, the players are believing that you know we play a certain style for long enough that we're going to be able to compete with most teams. And yeah, you know, four weeks in a row is probably a testament to that. It won't be because Jack Crisp's kick wasn't particularly spectacular, but your eleventh goal should be the goal of the year. Well, the one we started with with the the what's his name on the yeah. on the halfback flank yeah. was we showed the players um, on Monday in a bit of a mid season review and you know the sort of team we want to be and I showed that clip and and talked to some of the fundamental elements of yeah. it like with the way we're trying to receive the ball by hand and and go forward with it we've been practicing that for eight months but I, I must say that they have the camera on the bench. And luckily they didn't catch me because I lost my I lost my way. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, what were do- you doing? Oh, I was doing the double fist pump. And- <laughs> I oh. love it. It was it was a thing. Look, I, I'm a Carlton supporter, so I, I don't necessarily. I'm happy for you, but not necessarily for your footy club. Or, but that goal was it was it was a thing of beauty to watch that. Just the ping ping nature of it, and the way the ball just kept flowing, and they had to make it up a little bit at times, but they. There was an out for them all the time. Jeez, it was a beautiful, yeah. beautiful team goal. Yeah, they're, they're playing with a sense of soul. Yeah, we are playing with a sense of fun and, and excitement. And mm. yeah, the crowd, geez, they were they were excited yeah. in that moment. That the um, to have the fans back, and we're lucky we get to play in, big, in front of big crowds. We, we're really grateful for that. But to, to hear our fans roar, mm. um, all in unison, that's uh, that's pretty exciting. And what's what's happened with Mason Cox? Because most people think well, he's well, become an Australian. Citizen. Well, that's true. Yeah. And, and I, we yeah. we you, we spoke of that off air, which you want to talk about. But just firstly, with his playing, because I remember the start of the year, we asked you. I don't know if it was on, on air or off air, but. The, the, he had some work to do. No, it was on it. But was it? Yep. <laughs> it was but, on it. <laughs> well, I didn't want to. But the transformation where he goes from that to a bit stiff not to be BOG in a, a big game like that, What? how does that happen? Oh, look, I, I think, you know, go back in time, we did have a conversation. I said, we're probably going to play youth before you, mate. Mm. And, um, you know, you're going to have to go back to reserves. And at that time, he wasn't playing great footy. Everyone could see that. But just to see him get back and, and work on his craft and, and show leadership and, and improve and get an opportunity and – you know, he got an opportunity, I think, against Frio and then hurt his finger mm. and then gets another opportunity through, you know, I think it might have been a week later and, and started to really start to find his feet. And, um, you know, he's playing as good as I've seen him play right now. Mm. And you went to his um, yeah. you went to his nat- nationalisation ceremony yesterday? Oh, it was amazing. So yeah. Why was it so amazing? Oh, look, I, I didn't – Collingwood organised. I didn't realise they had. And I walked in, there's about 150 people becoming an Australian citizen. And I went there with my wife and – I'm sitting down the front, Gazy, and um, but I, they all stood up in unison and, yeah. and 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 did this pledge to become Australian citizens. And I, mm. I just, I was a little bit overwhelmed. I must admit, the the joy in the room, and you can just imagine the stories of. You know, Mason's got a story that's quite unique, but there's a there was refugees and all people from all different backgrounds there, and they all all had an opportunity to become Australian citizens. And I got caught up in it. And, and fun enough, we're sitting down the front, and. Um, yeah, right next to the the minister of yeah. um, I don't mm. I'm not sure what what, mm. what minister he was to be honest, <laughs> right. but but the, everyone comes past and is shaking his hand mm. and they're getting their certificate, and for some reason they thought me and my wife were part of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you started shaking your hands. So, so so all of a sudden we were dignitaries and we we, we were part of the ceremony, shaking 150 people hand, and <laughs> I was just right. but it was overwhelming. It was yeah. really it was joyful. Oh, it really was. It makes you really when you go to those ceremonies and uh, and you're welcoming these people in. I've been to a couple of them before. But the, you're right. The pride that oh. you have in Australia, in yeah, our nation, yeah. and and welcoming welcoming people to it, it, it is can be a little oh. overwhelming. Oh, we're so lucky. Yeah. We? Like it, you take a moment to sit back and think how grateful we are for, we are for what we have, and, and many don't. Mm. Um, we're we're a lucky country, that's for sure. And mm. what, did did you get a sense of what it meant to Mason? Yeah, yeah, he's got a big smile on his face. If you look at his social media um, with his certificate, it, it is a yeah. big occasion. His family was there. His mum, mum and dad flew over from America. And, 
Um, yeah, you can officially start to eat Vegemite now. I don't, I don't think he, he doesn't like it. I know I'm saying that out loud. Well, there's the sunshine in the week. Mm. And I, I, I'm, look, the big story is obviously Jordan Yeo, and, you, and you've lived it since the vision became um, apparent to all of us, and there's been um, a few twists and turns since then. So we haven't heard from you since then. So let us just get these questions out of the way. There's a million things that I'm sure you'll address and have addressed behind closed doors, and I'm sure there's things that you'll keep behind closed doors. But um, let, let's go right back to the start. Let's just clear it up. So, so the trip to Bali. You, you knew he was going to Bali. He, yeah. He, 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 yep. Yep. Yeah, I knew he was going to Bali, and um, yeah, I, I, I've got Lee Matthews in my head a mm. lot, and you've probably yeah. heard me. Yeah. Lee used to say to us, he used to say, "We'll treat you like men, and we'll give you the trust of it, and then you act like men." Yep. We treat you like boys, then you act like. Yeah, yeah, and so I've got that ringing in my head, and I, I want all our players to feel there's a level of trust mm. um, to make their own decisions, and some are going to make good ones, and some are going to be make make poor ones at times. And I, I, I also say I'm I live I live in a moral compass world where I want to take accountability for my own actions. Yeah, I do. I take responsibility for things that I do right and wrong, and I've made many mistakes, and I, I own up and I go, no, not good enough. I want to be better in that space, and I want. Our, funny enough, my moral compass fits with Collingwood's moral compass. Mm. We're on the same page. You make a mistake, which we all do at times, take accountability, and we give our players the opportunity and possibility to, to take accountability and responsibility for their actions. So I wanted to say that first. Mm. Um, in Geordie's case, um, I, I can't help but think right now, I just want to get him back. Yeah, I yeah. really do. I want to get my arms around him. I've, I spoke to him yesterday, and he's not in the place to step back in the footy club mm. right now, but I, I want him to get in. Like he, he's got to step through a few, few things first, and... Um, and to, to get in a space where he can do that. But it's a safe place for him, our footy club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want yeah. him to feel loved and supported. I, mm. I can't help I, I'm, It's in my DNA, love and support, and not only him, but all our players. Mm. Um, get in our four walls and let's get our arms around him and help him help him um, move forward on this. What, was it a, a, a tough decision? Like, did you sit down with the other coaches and said, well, Geordie, he's going to go over to Bali. Is this the right thing? Like, Did you have to contemplate it or was it just as simple as you saying, no, Lee Matthews ringing in your ear, yep. or was it a? Did the club have to make that decision as no, well? No, I don't, I don't think we. We'll, as long as I'm the coach, I'm mm. not going to say no. You're not, not going to do that, right? Uh, look, my dad told me not to go to an 18th birthday once. I, I snuck out. <laughs> right. yeah? Like, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. you got to trust people. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I reckon if we make rules like that. You know, I think we're in a place we want to treat them like adults, and and he's got his management team and, and other people around him to help mm. him make these decisions. And um, rightly, wrongly, the decision was made. It's mm. done. So so that we can't change that. Mm. And but ultimately, what we can do is learn and educate and and make our, our players better. What's he? I don't know how much you can tell. But well, what's he grappling with the most? I mean, he's missed a couple of training sessions, and you say you want him to come back, and it's a safe place. And I totally believe all of that. And I, I'm sure you will be a very good sounding board for him when he gets back to you face to face. But what what's what's keeping him away from the footy club at the moment? Um, oh, look, obviously he's not in a place to be able to do that, and yeah. I, I don't want to speak openly about the details of what okay. it could look like. And, um, again, uh, I, I, was, I was telling our players, we had one-on-one players, uh, one-on-one meetings with our players, I'd, every single player before they went on a buy. And, and on the Tuesday post the uh, Queen's birthday game, I had about 20, 20, 20 minute mm. interviews. And so it was, um, yeah, so I, I met, I met with them and multiple players. I spoke about this. Um, do you ever have, have a hero you looked up to Casey? Oh, many. Yeah. Mm. Well, I had one, I told this story to the players. Mm. I had this one in Adelaide growing up and I had a duffel coat. Remember the old right. yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I had his name and number on my back. It, anyway, I idolised this guy right from when I was about mm. six to, you know, right through to 15 and beyond. And one day when I was um, about eight or nine, and I was out having mm. a few beers with my mate, and I met him. Mm. And he wasn't a great bloke. Right. right. He was a shocker. <laughs> right. Like I met this guy, I'm going, oh, what a disappointment. Mm. This is mm. my idol, my hero. Mm. Anyway, I'm telling this story to a few players um, on the Tuesday. I said, you know, for as long as I'm sitting in the chair as the coach of Collingwood, I want to make you a better person. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I'm determined to do that. And I don't know how long I'm going to do this job for. Mm. It's, it's got an expiry date. I don't know. But I want you to be a better person. And so it goes well beyond the footy field. So I can't help but think this week we've lost a few battles. Mm. Yeah. We, we have yeah. Yeah, mm. in terms of what we want to be. But I'm really determined to win the war on this and make our players better. Mm. Does it, does, do you, is it your belief that Jordan Ngoi understands what he actually did wrong? Well, he's, 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 um, in a space where he's taking accountability and responsibility at the moment, yep. we haven't heard from him to, to say those words out loud. Yep. Um, and, and he's going to get to a place where that's going to be the case. Yep. How long have you known about his ADHD? Uh, yeah, a while. Yep. Yeah. Like it's, it's, um, yeah, 
I've only been in the chair. Yeah, I've yeah, known it for as long as I've known Geordie. Yep. yep. Um, so that's that's something that's come to light later last year. Yeah. And and how do you when you look at it? And I spoke to Hutchie very briefly about it. But uh, as you're going through this. Uh, a lot of this, the attention's actually gone back on in the media and how they've handled this situation and whether or not they're, they're paying enough respect to the challenges of, of Geordie, notwithstanding that he, he messed up. Uh, do you have a judgment on, uh, are you disappointed in the media and the way in which they've uh, reported this situation? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. I'll, mm. All I've put my attention on is, is love and support, and not just for Geordie because mm. we, we, we have players being doorstop daily. Yep. Um, actually, finally, I, I don't know if this is... Hmm. Others do this, but I I grab the come into work every morning and hmm. I, I say, look, if you put the cameras down, I'm happy to chat to you hmm. and and just show people respect. Hmm. You got a job to do. I understand you. This is you're employed to do this. So yeah. let's work together on this. So I, I think there's a level of respect that we can we can um, you know, have that within that situation. But again, I come back to what what I want to do for our footy mm. club, not only our players, but our staff. Like I'm really conscious this week of how our female staff are gone. Mm. Yep. I've, I've gone, I've gone out of my way. Not, mm. I don't want to, sh- shouldn't go out of my way. Just being, being who I am just to make sure they're okay. Yep. Um, and what was the rea- Was there a reaction from the cohort? From, from the female cohort at the footy club? I'm just checking that they're okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. So, like how are you handling this? Are you okay? Yep. You know, yep. Is there anything we can do? Um, just be open with it. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, we're 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 not immune to trying to try, try to get better, and we're in the business of trying to make our whole club a better place. Mm. Did you get a sense talking to the other players, particularly the senior guys who have known Jordan for a while? Did you get a sense from them about whether they were supportive slash disappointed? What was the kind of range of emotions they were and responses they were feeling? Yeah, yeah, we want Jordy back. Yeah, mm. in our footy club. Yep. To uh, put our arms around him and educate him and support him and do, do whatever we can to mm. do that. Like, yeah, his well being is really important to us. Um, yeah, we want to get him back. In there. And, the, and the leaders, we're, we're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, some make many. Um, I think some of the best lessons in life I've learned through making mistakes mm. and growing from. And this is, I see this as an opportunity for all of us to, to be mm. better. Just, just on him though, and, I, and you, I know you, I really respect you, and I, but this is we, no one's heard from you all week. So he goes what he goes through in New York, and it's a it's. We think it's going to be a if a, if if you've got a sense of understanding and a gravity for a situation, you think it's going to be a turning point. Now, what happened in Bali is not what he was alleged to have been involved in, and eventually has has lived through in New York. So so they're they're different they're different um, they're different things that he that he experienced. Having been through pretty recently what he went through in New York, when you saw the video, when it first broke, take us back to your, were you disappointed initially? Were you angry? Were you frustrated? Was there, What was your first reaction before you started to work your way through, through that? Um, because you do treat him like a man. You've said all that. Go, Bali. Yeah. Respect the decision. I'm not going to talk you out of it. You know, you, we think you're going to have learnt the lesson. And, and it's not what was, they're not the same, but, but when you first saw that vision surface. Yeah. I, I look, I, I think many of us have learned from the New York situation around Geordie's just want to get all the facts. Like yeah. what's going on here? You know, what's, what is this, what's been happening? And yep. so I'm, I'm, made some phone calls around to get some more details around it. So I, I didn't really have an emotion. I must admit, I was, I was just kind of, all right, well, let's get to the, let's get the facts and find out what's real. And okay. because sometimes things get misreported or whatever. Yeah. So I just want to get the details of that. Um, but I just, I went straight into a level of, okay, what, what, what do I need to, and funny, I have Clarko in my head a lot too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> what would Clarko do right you got, you got a pretty couple of powerful voices <laughs> yeah, in your head. Yep, yep. I, I, and the, the, the New York one for straight mm. away, what would Clarko do? Mm. All right, he'd fly to New York. Well, I can't do that. Mm. Um, so I, I do have, I do think like that uh, a little bit. Yeah. Mm. What, what, when you look at the, 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 the situation that he is going through, uh, yeah, we want to be compassionate. But is there an element of you that maybe you're angry because of the potential impact that it has? You're 4-0. You've just had this magnificent win, and now you haven't been rejoicing in the, the, the Collingwood. You had to deal with this and a couple and another incident as well. Like, like, will it have an impact on the team? Is it, is it hard work now to n- not have that impact actually on playing this weekend? Well, I look... I'm going to say this out loud to all our Collingwood supporters and fans that are listening here. Mm. There's no 
There's not one um, piece of evidence right now to suggest that this is going to affect our performance yeah. on the weekend. Yeah. And, and you can only go on, it's Wednesday, mm. and mm. if we, if a horse is at track, we're going, oh, we're in good shape. Like <laughs> yeah. Because the way the boys trained yesterday, we, I believe on setting ourselves up to succeed. And, yeah. and, this, and a lot of things are out of your control, and you've still got to run the race. Mm. But our players have seen a huge correlation between um, training form mm. and then um, performance on the weekend. And Monday and Wednesday's training form are as good as we've had this year. So... Yeah, you can only go on what you see. Yeah. And there's going to be, I, I do a lot of work with Emma Murray one-on-one. Yep. Um, former, yeah, she's at Richmond or was at Richmond when I was there and um, a bit a bit of life skill coaching myself. And she talks about your attention being pulled a lot. There's no no doubting that, mm. that, that our attention has been pulled to, you know, to certain different uh, areas. And But our ability when our players are in our four walls right now, mm. they are looking as well prepared as I've seen them um, this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you involved in the decision to withdraw the contract? Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not Going involved to in that. anything okay. to do with contracts. Right. On. So, and, and one of the things again, I learned off Lee. Don't talk about players' contract. And I said that right from the start. It's yeah. been. It's, it's been. Um, it's been a, an easy thing to do. Mm. do you, okay, again, were, were you involved in the punishment with the the, the twenty five thousand suspended no, since? No. No. Um, Oh, look, I'm, I'm a coach. I want to get a ground <laughs> yeah, balls right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's... Well, you're doing that okay. Mm, yeah. But a coach has to deal with this. I mean, the, the, when when you know you, we know you know people who've been around footy know that you're going to have a role. You're going to have a pretty significant role in the at some stage and at some level, a pretty high level. I would have thought Jordan Ngoi here now and Jordan Ngoi going forward. Now, I believe you on the contract, and of course, again, I think I know what you're going to say already here. But do you think you'll be at Collingwood next year? Uh, I'd hope so. Yeah, I really do. Like yeah. I, I hope we we get we, he he finds a place where he can um, he can come back and then he can you know be the best version of himself. I, I want to have an environment where all our players are better for when they um, when they come in and when they leave. And I don't know, look, to be honest, I, I don't know when that is. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I don't know when it's for me because you're living this. We're watching it. Yeah. We're in here, and the Channel <laughs> yes. Seven four o'clock news yeah. service is on. Beck Madden's hosting it. And you're talking to us here, and they are replaying on the television news, <laughs> like literally two minutes after yeah. you've said it, see, what can, you've said. I can see Hutchie out there. He's really happy, isn't he? How, yeah. how, uh, how, um, how is that? Well, a- it's funny. I, I, I drove in here today, and mm. I, I sort of get off of Power Street, and I duck up the inside. Anyone knows mm. Power Street there? And I've got this brilliant way of just sneaking in. <laughs> you're not one of those, are you? Yeah, I am one oh. of those. And so anyway, I have got, got to the end today, and I, I couldn't sneak in, so I had to... Get right at the lights and do something. <laughs> I shouldn't, can I get fined for this? Yet? No, no, but I don't but, like it as much anymore. I know, yeah, so, yeah. but I ducked in, and this car come revving up and beeping me, and oh. and then I'm going, oh no! And he, he comes revving up like the side, and then he winds it in the window, and he goes, "Lucky you're the coach, <laughs> Colin." <laughs> so we can't do the I can't do the things I used to be able to no, do. No, no, not anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm, I won't be ducking in from here on. Here. I've asked <laughs> you this question a few times, and again, I'll ask you after because Kevi asked you about Monday mm. and Queen's birthday. This is an, a growing awareness you, you have now, and, and it, with the good and the bad, you know, the Jordan Ngoi a week after Queen's birthday, another one of those days that the Collingwood coach gets to experience. Yeah. It, how much bigger <laughs> is this job than you, if you ever am, imagined the magnitude of it, how much bigger is the job? Oh. Do you ever I, think about that? No, not really. Like I, I actually, I, I, I'm not used to the fame. If, if you know, if that's such a thing, I'm not used to being recognised. And I said, that to, I said to the leper, he goes, "Well, I am." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, but it is something different. Like even taking the family away to, to Cairns and this, you know, Collingwood supporters everywhere. Mm. I, you don't realise it. I'm not used to that. So that's taking a little time to adjust. How do you cope with the? Because he gets it all the time. Yeah. The hey, hey, young coach, you know what are we doing? With it? Should he be in the team this week? Yeah. And because they feel like there, there is this, they feel like they have the. And I watch they know it, you. They I, feel like and they feel like they're a blo- yeah. they're, they're okay yeah. coming up and asking you anything. They get, yeah. This is their sixty yeah. seconds are going to get at you. Yeah. How do you, is that? Are you getting good at handling that? Well, I, like I said about my hero that let me down. I didn't let me down, but I, I don't want to be that guy. Mm. Yeah. I want I want to give people the time of day, and thirty seconds of your day doesn't take much to um, to give to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You, you mentioned Lee a bit. I want to ask you about. Uh, Actually, we got Lee coming in tomorrow. I'm so excited. Oh, Collingwood. To talk yeah. to the players. Yep. Yeah. He's, awesome. He's coming in at nine o'clock and uh, he's going to, I've just, I don't want to give him too many guidelines because there's no how amazing mm. he is. And I just took it because we've been trying to honour our jumper all year in, mm. in terms of talking about the history of it. And yeah. I just asked Lee to come down. I know he's coming down for a game tonight. And um, I said, there's any chance you can come in the club mm. tomorrow. And he is. And um, yeah, we were excited by that. Yeah. You know, see, 
Far be it from me to tell anyone how to suck eggs, but <laughs> it would be good if Jordan Nagawi was there to hear that. <laughs> oh. It would be good if Jordan Nagawi was there to hear that. Of course. Sit in the room with Lee Matthews and hear him talk about mm. that. Yeah. He, he's not going to be there, is he? Don't go, no, but no, no Jordy's not. That's a pity. I mean, that would be, you know, if you're one of, if you're mm. Dugowie's manager, if I'm his mate, I'm saying, hey, get in there and have a listen to that. Yeah, we're excited by it. It's funny. I, I just got a picture today of, um, I've got wallpaper in my, my office, and I, it's, <laughs> it's been a work in progress. But I wanted to get the premiership coaches of Collingwood on my wall. Mm. All, there's four, four or five of them, in, and um, I text actually Mick Maltes a picture of us. And I look, I'd, uh, Mick, I've. Just wanted to let you know this is what I've got in my office because it's it to, to honour the premiership coaches of Collingwood, um, something to to honour but also to aspire to. That is great. And um, yeah, Mick gave me he really mm. really valued that. And then Lee's on it as well, so I will get to show Lee tomorrow. So mm. the reason I was going to so that's great you're getting him in. Uh, have you ever seen him nervous? Have you ever seen Lee Matthews nervous? No, have you? I the late the other night he had to introduce. He yeah, did the introduction that, speech yeah. for Bruce McAvaney. Terrified. Terrified, and we when he walked came in the room after the thing, said, "Well done, Lee." How you going? He said, "Oh, yeah." I was Edgar Britton myself, yeah. And he, he could see he was actually he, for the first time ever that we've we've ever seen Lee Matthews. He was actually nervous. Yeah, well, I, I knew that he got quite anxious before the um, before games, and to the level of I'm not sure if he's feeling unwell, really sick. Yeah. Um, we didn't see that because we were out doing our thing. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to telling the story tomorrow mm. because we we got Lee's honour roll, mm -hmm. and I've deliberately got everything in it. It's That's a ridiculous. lot. Ridiculous, mm. like it is unbelievable. If you Google it, mm. it's what he's been able to achieve. And mm. I've got I've got it on a slide, and I've got to tell the story about when Justin Leverage said, "Oh, you know, we made you, Lee," <laughs> and this is after winning our third flag, and yeah, we're in a lift going up to celebrate. We made you, Lee, and Lee's comeback was, "Nah, you're right. I'd only be player of the century without you, blokes." <laughs> <laughs> when you look at when you look at that honor roll, that's one of the great stories. When you look at that honor roll, is it does it solidify in your mind that he's the greatest oh, player of all time? To kick nine hundred and fifteen yep. goals yep. as a <laughs> as an inside mid slash go forward like yep. like Dusty, how many goals Dusty kick? Because like, yep. mm. everyone says Lee's uh, you know, Dusty's referred to like yep. like Lee. He kicked nine hundred and fifteen <laughs> goals. It's incredible. It was um yeah it was incredible. Yeah. Mm. Is mm. it true that so the rumor is that throughout his coaching days he really he really only spoke to the six or seven best players in a team and he really didn't speak. To, <laughs> in fact, some folks say he didn't even know the names. <laughs> well, I think he knew, he knew our names, but right. geez, I, I didn't get much. He would get a flight. That's all I got. Get, get down the hallways. Um, yeah, no, he didn't. I didn't have an overly big relationship with him. A lot of respect, though. Yeah, no, well, no, of no, no, um, no luncheons or the brekkies, <laughs> no. the catch ups. No, catch up, no. Uh, no, no. But, but you, that's not obviously your style, though, is it? Well, I mean, you've only got a finite amount of time, yeah. but. I would guess that you're trying to devote a little bit more attention to a, a, a wider group than the top six yeah. players. Yeah, it's a big big job in terms mm. of trying to connect with all. Um, I'm not a big guy that gets people around the house for dinner. I, right. I, I know some do that, but mm. while I'm at the footy club, I, I give all my attention and care. Mm. Um, and like I said, put my arm around as many as I can. Mm. You're going to both play in his 150th game this week. And I suspect in the video clips from the Melbourne game, there might have been a Maynard clip or two that you showed to the group. Um, can you tell us about him in terms of what he gives, how much of himself he gives and how much of himself he's got out yeah. um, to be the player that, he, that he's become? Jeez, he's a competitor, isn't he? Yeah, mm. I, I think he's second or third in winning one-on-ones in the competition. Um, yeah, whether he gets Toby Green this week, that, that'd be well, that's generally That's generally gets him, don't he? I'm not sure yeah. how that's going to eventuate. Yes, yeah. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the teams at right. 6 o'clock. Um, no, but I think he's he's just such – he's actually an infectious character too. Mm. Like his personality is one that is very engaging and people love to be around him. Mm. Um, he's a hard trainer, really competitive guy, as, as you see on the field. You see that off um, at training as well. And, um, I can't help but think like, off the field he's, he's one of those guys that – Many would look up to. Yeah. Like, like, if you met him and he was your idol, you'd be really, really pleased. So he would him. give time. Is oh, he one of those blokes? Absolutely. Yep. 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 To all. Yeah. To all. And, um, yeah, we're trying to get our families back in to the footy club and, and connect. And he's, he's a big drawer of that. He, he seems to walk that, uh, fine line between really aggressive and <sighs> maniacal out there. Yep. But, you know, every now and again he might go, but, but he seems to, Make that judgment really well in the heat of the moment. Yeah, he, he, if you say, um, you know, who, which player do you think's got someone else's back the most? He's mm. the guy. Right, right, right. Yeah, he that, is the guy. Yeah. If, if there's a little niggle, yeah, he'll be there. Yeah, yeah. we um, did. We actually did that the other day. Mm. 
fly the flagman. Yeah, we yeah. had the chat about who's the first one in. in well, for, he, yeah, he's oh, yours. He's ours, I reckon. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, given G- Gazy was keen to speak to you about the run you're on at the moment, within a season, do you change your expectations of what is possible, what you set the benchmark as for your team? Not in terms of outcome of um, ladder position, but uh, – yeah, we, we raise the bar on our training stands. We raise the bar on all sorts of stuff and expectations on, on getting better. Um, you set a level of uh, habits that we create and go, oh, hang on a minute. That's not what we expect of us now. We're, we're way better than that. Yeah. Whether in the gym, yeah, I, I go in the gym and do 15 minutes and yeah. we've got, <laughs> got a bit of work to do still. Like, I know this is radio and people can't see these. <laughs> no, you're, really, you're, in, you're really obsessed you're with those, aren't you? Very oh, you're very condition. worried about your man boobs. Yeah. Oh. This is something that you're very conscious mm, of. I get a lot of feedback on that. <laughs> right. but, but I get in there and, and there's a, there's an energy in there and, yeah. and, and there's an expectation now on mm. all those things. And you know, I, I've openly, you've probably heard it to death about getting better every day. There's an expectation on that. Yeah. Um, you, mm. yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, if you, if you, if you look at, the states and clubs and individuals over there, they're, they're, it's, they're unashamedly, they'll tell you how great they are and they'll tell you what they're going to do. And they don't have much fear about making bold statements and, and, and perhaps sometimes coming up a little short. Uh, with what we see this year, there's no reason you guys can't win the whole thing. Do you, is it, is it, are you conscious? It's not lofty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there's already headlines up there. You know right. No, no, but I'm still, oh, I'm, the, do you twist that within the McRae group? McRae says we will win premiership. No, no, I'm not. I'm not but I'm saying internally, uh, you, you do you, get, are you allowed to talk about that or not? I, I, what I will say mm. is, is you can see belief being built mm. and then possibility comes from that. Mm. And so you don't shy away from from possibility and, mm. and you go, well, there's hope. There's Well, hope becomes belief through action and, you know, you, you just, you don't know. What, and what I, what I will say, and I heard um, – Fagan talked about it yesterday about how even the competition is. Mm. It, it doesn't take doesn't take long oh, no. for a couple of magnets to go out, and our <laughs> team in particular looks a lot different. Mm. Well, you um, you as a player mm. when you were playing for the Tigers, mm. you would have I imagine you would have loved to hear your teammates, even though the latter might not have suggested mm. your prime candidate mm. to win a championship. I would imagine you would have loved to tell your team, hey, boys, we can win that. We can win the whole thing this year. Absolutely, oh, you would love, wouldn't you? If I don't know whether you've heard that, not whether that's. But if you were just wandering around the gym or early kick around before you got stuck right into training and a couple of your boys in the runarounds were saying, hey, boys, we're in this no up to our why you can't win the yeah, whole thing. We'd love to hear your players saying that, wouldn't you? Uh, is my, my parking <laughs> <mess. laughs> <laughs> oh, we, 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 well, we want to be winners. Mm, and we're trying yeah, to – mm. and, and some of the messaging uh, I hope that the listeners hear at the start is that, you know, although we've lost a couple of battles this week, we mm. want to win the war. And mm. – and, yeah, you know, we, we we're in the position uh, in the business of trying to get better and, yeah. and keep yeah. winning and improving and learning and, and making mistakes and failing and getting up and going again. I think mm. that's um that's something we we want to do. I'll speak you to the last one. You'll see you'll say you'll find it when the teams are selected. But a few <laughs> of the mid season draftees have found their way in. Is oh, yours yes. is yours going to get a run around this week? Uh, not I'm not allowed to say this week. Not this week. No, yeah, um, yeah. But we're excited by what we've yeah. seen on the training track. Like he hasn't he hasn't played uh, much and he has, he hasn't worn a jumper enough to know in and out of how we want to play. But certainly yesterday at training, he was one of those guys who go, well, okay, I really like what he's doing at the yeah. moment. So, yeah. Um, yeah, watch his space. I think it's, if he continues to learn our system, mm. um, opportunities may present for us. Mate, it would have been understandable if you had said to us Not this, this week, week. look, yeah. I'll, I'll come in next week. I'll give you two weeks in a row next week, boys. So uh, we really appreciate you coming in today. So yeah, thanks, good mate. Good to see you guys. Mm. You're a good man. Mm. Craig McRae, Collingwood coach, joining us. It's